I'm a commentator and I don't call people's names because that makes it personal and then people lose the message. But I see a commentator who discusses things, but when anybody else tries to talk, he cut them off. I think you're wrong because LeBron is the best player. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Don't you ever call up to my show again and open up disrespecting me. You don't have a right to do that. Jalen, Skip Bayless, <clears throat> I need y'all to be quiet and listen to me. Because let me tell you something right now. I'm disgusted with both of y'all. I- the Disgrace Philly fans didn't Disgrace believe them. They were behind it. You nine. should be allowed to talk basketball. Philadelphia you agrees with me. You should be allowed. You ought to be ahead, ashamed of yourself. Go ahead, Molly. All I know is this. I, I don't even want to talk to Max right now. Maybe I'm the Knicks should be doing that. Did you just say that? I'm tired of you not listening to me. I'm tired of you hearing what you want to hear. I'm tired of you, you lumping it that? into. Listen, I'm tired of you hearing good guys and bad guys, my side and the bad side. I'm, I'm tired of you saying anything that disagrees with you is beyond the realm of politics. That I'm tired be of being more. I'm tired of you saying it's moral versus None immoral. Of those things occur. And ca- he doesn't let him even be heard. And the same commentator said when he stepped into the game, he did anything he needed to do to make his boss money. Operative word is boss. The same person I watch a white man hold down our community better than he does. It's transparency, Stephen A. And that's like, the, like I've done it. I've had incidents throughout, throughout the course of my career. And then there have been times where I've tried, I've gone into interviews where I've done an hour and a half, two hours of an interview. And then they break down and they edit. And then you guys get on, uh, get on the show and there's a panel of people. And then they break down whatever clips that they show. They're mm-hmm. not showing the entire hour and a half or two hours of that, of that interview that I've done. So what he wanted was transparency for people to see the full workout, to see the full Colin Kaepernick. Again, you, you mentioned obviously Max is going to get in here. And like I said, I'm in the streets. Max almost seems blacker than you, Stephen A., <laughs> with 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 what time he out. with with he's coming out. you know with this commentary. Time 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 with all due respect, my brother. You don't, <laughs> I'm just you, saying, dog. Time, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm just I'm a, saying. I'm gonna check you right now. You don't cross. I'm the line. I'm just saying. Time out. Time out. Time out. Wait a minute. You don't cross the line. <laughs> First of all, like I said, you, Colin Kaepernick, <laughs> Eric Reed, any of y'all that want to debate me in front of black people and talk about what's best for black people, name the time and place, I'll show up. I don't want to hear, what's the definition of blackness? Is there a definitive definition of blackness? Why are you giving the impression that because I don't march lockstep with every single thing that Colin Kaepernick wants. Okay, excuse me. Hold on. I'm not agreeing. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I'm not agreeing with everything that Colin Kaepernick has done. I'm not saying that, but you said, but you just sat up there and used an expression. More blacker. Excuse me. I'm from Hollis, Queens, New York City. You ain't the you ain't the only you ain't the only brother out there that's in the streets. I'm in the streets every day. I get it. I'm a a matter of so let's be And then and then from my understanding, just my understanding, I may be wrong about this. Then he gets thrown off of the show because he has other views. On my podcast, I always tell my people, say what you have to say because you may be right. You know, it's so funny how every Black History Month, we talk about leaders who made sacrifices. We always say in our community that we want to change. Well, in a change, what encompasses change is you doing something different. Not doing the same shit over and over again. And so you have black people who are trying to do something different and you have the audacity to crucify them in public. What if you're wrong? What if you're leading people um, down a path that is not right? Why all of a sudden, when white people let you die in the streets, all of a sudden they care about your health? I saw somebody say one time, shit, Johnson & Johnson can't get fucking baby powder right. They can't even fucking get baby powder right. What in the fuck? You know, just say that we scared. Just say that you don't know. Because to be honest with you, man, 
the sad thing about it is, is some of you all have ran yourself into a corner that you won't be able to get out of. Some of you all have made decisions because you're scared and you're hurrying that you won't be able to take back. If what I know to be true is right and exact, and I don't say much until I can get the facts because I stand on the shit that I say. I'm willing to take responsi uh, responsibility for what I say. Most of these motherfuckers get up here and say the worst shit in the world and lead people in the wrong direction. And then once they find out they're wrong, they just move on to the next topic and, and do the man's bidding for that shit. You can't tell me that y'all motherfuckers can't reach out to Kyrie and get in contact with him. I know you a fucking lie because I got in contact with him and I talked to him. So you telling me you got to get on TV, not understanding what this young man is going into. And as grown black men, you're going to get in and, and, and on TV and join in with this witch hunt. You weak as fuck. All y'all motherfuckers are weak as fuck. I try to always say it is my opinion. This is what I feel. I never forget, and I told y'all this story one time. There was somebody in news that I really wanted to put my hands on. I thought they were the worst thing for black people. And um, it, it bothered me so bad, I went and sat down with the minister. And the minister asked me, well, first of all, the minister said, David Banner, I understand how you feel. He said, but... Have you personally talked to this man? How do you know he knows any better? He said, you can't hold anybody. And I'm paraphrasing here. You can't hold anybody for so, uh, you can't hold anybody to something that you haven't taught them. You don't know if they know what you know. You don't know their experiences or what they went through. You know how hard it is to get money in America. If a person is standing for something, there must be a reason. We got to do better, man. And we keep thinking that people who are upwardly mobile in America, and I'm not saying if you're successful, you sold out. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is if it's easy for you and you're moving fluently, my mother used to always say, if you don't run into the devil four or five times a day, nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten you walking with him. <laughs>